This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and it's Wednesday, so that means it's time for another MTG Top 10. The series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. I've been doing this series since February of 2016 and there are more than 340 MTG Top 10s. Because I've done so many of these and I've been doing them for so long, I sometimes go back to old videos I did and update them. And that's what we're doing today. In January of 2019, I did an MTG Top 10 on Simic. It's only been two years since then. And most of the time, I wait a little longer to do an update, but there has been a crazy amount of turnover on this list in only the last two years. Blue-green getting busted cards is basically a meme at this point, but would you believe that only two years ago, Simic was actually the color pair with the lowest average score using my methodology? So Simic was a pretty weak color pair for most of Magic's history, and then, in the last two years, it has been getting tons of super powerful cards. That is a recipe for a lot of change on this MTG Top 10. Of the 10 cards that made it back in 2019, only three are still on the list, and they have all dropped several spots. So in this video, I'll do a brief discussion of the seven cards that fell off the list, and then we'll get into the 2021 version of this MTG Top 10. Before I get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A top eight at a Pro Tour, Players Tour, Mythic Championship, Mythic Invitational, Legacy or Vintage Championship is worth two points, and a top eight at a Magic Fest or Grand Prix is worth one point. All right, now let's talk about the cards that made the 2019 list, but didn't make it this time. Last time around, Slippery Bogle was number 10 with five points. This one mana 1-1 one -one with Hexproof lends its name to a modern deck that runs other cheap creatures with Hexproof, and slaps a bunch of auras on them. The Bogle has actually been pretty successful since 2019. Back then, Bogles was a deck that had a few random top eights in Standard and Modern, but it's become a more consistent performer in Modern over the last few years. Slippery Bogle gained eight points in the last two years for a total score of 13. The number 10 card on this year's video also has 13 points, but as we'll see, it is more Pro Tour top eights, so I gave it the edge for now. The good news for the Bogle is that if it continues to just have some modest success, it will probably make it back on this list in the end, but for now, it didn't quite make it. Next, let's look at Shardless Agent, which was number nine last time. It comes with a powerful cascade mechanic, which makes it easy to get a two for one when you play it, and that's always sweet value. It was printed in a supplemental set and never legal in formats like Standard or Modern, but it's a key card in Legacy. The Agent has increased its score to 10 over the last two years, but that wasn't enough to stay on this list. That said, like Bogle, it is likely to continue to gain points, so it may be able to pass some of the inactive cards ahead of it in the long run. Next, let's look at the card that was at number 8 in 2019, Simic Sky Swallower. This huge creature with Shroud is not easy to deal with and can end the game in a hurry. He gained all of his points in Ravnica Block Constructed, where he was a control deck win condition. He has had zero points since 2006, so it isn't much of a surprise that he fell off of this list. However, the fact that he made it at all in 2019 shows you just how weak the Simic list was in 2019. Next, let's look at 2019's number seven card, Void Slime. This Simic counterspell is nice because it can not only counter, you know, spells, but also activated abilities. It gained all of its points in Ravnica Block Constructed alongside Simic Sky Swallower. The number six card on 2019's list was Bounding Crassus. It has a nice baseline as a three mana three three with flash, and then it has the ability to tap or untap things when it enters the battlefield, which can be pretty nice on a creature that can be played at instant speed. While in Standard, he was featured in Collected Company decks, but the Crassus hasn't made the transition to Collected Company decks in other formats, and hasn't gained any points since 2016. The number 5 card in 2019's list was Kiora, the Crashing Wave. This Simic Planeswalker can prevent damage a creature does for a turn, help you draw and ramp, and has an ultimate that churns out Krakens. That's a pretty powerful set of abilities, even if its starting loyalty is 2. She was played in a variety of control decks while she was in Standard, but she doesn't have any points since 2015. The number four card in 2019 was Mystic Snake. This is one of my favorite cards ever, so it's a little sad that it just missed out on making the list this time. The Snake is counterspell stapled to Grizzly Bear, and being able to use it to add to your board while countering something means you get one of those two-for-ones, which are great. All right, so those are all the cards that fell off the list this time around. Now, let's look at the 2021 version of MTG Top 10, Simic. At number 10, it is Trigon Predator, which was number three on the 2019 list, but has now plummeted to number 10 and is just barely on this list. 
Between 2009 and 2014, the Predator was pretty nice in Vintage and Legacy because you could use fast mana to get it down and then start gobbling up your opponent's powerful artifacts. If it isn't dealt with quickly, an early Predator can basically mean game over for many decks in those formats. While it is still played some in both formats, it doesn't have a premier event top 8 since 2014, so it is possible that it adds to its score, but not super likely, and if I revisit this list again in a few years, it won't be surprising to see that it's fallen off. At number 9, it is Frilled Mystic, a card very similar to Mystic Snake, which fell off the 2019 list. So similar, in fact, that in the 2019 video, I mentioned the then-recently printed Frilled Mystic when talking about Mystic Snake. Frilled Mystic is slightly different. It costs 2 green and 2 blue instead of 1 generic, 1 green and 2 blue, and it has 1 more power, but the basic design is the same, a 4-mana creature that counters a spell. And Frilled Mystic is good for the same reasons Mystic Snake was. Countering something and adding to the board at the same time is still very powerful. Mystic Snake gained all of its points in Standard. Some of those points came in Control decks, but I think the sweetest deck it was part of was Simic Flash, a deck really built around the Flash mechanic, which allowed it to leave up a bunch of mana for other spells too. It felt very much like an old-school aggro control deck, like the kinds that Mystic Snake was played in. So far, it doesn't have any points outside of Standard. At number 8, it is Ice Fang Coatl, the first of several cards on this list that didn't even exist back in 2019. The Coatl is a powerful snow payoff, basically becoming a better Baleful Strix if you have at least three other snow permanents, and that's a good comparison because Baleful Strix is a heavily played card in Legacy. And, as you probably guessed, the decks that have played the Coatl have no problem getting there on snow permanents, as just running snow-covered lands isn't a very big cost, especially because there are some other nice payoffs out there, too. Ice Fang Coatl was printed in Modern Horizons, which means it was never legal in Standard, but that's okay because it's been pretty successful elsewhere. While it has been modestly successful in Modern, Legacy is where Ice Fang Coatl has been the most dominant. It and Arkham's Astrolabe went a long way towards enabling four-color control decks to be highly successful in the format. So much so that the Astrolabe was actually banned about a week ago. I think it is possible for the Coatl to continue to be relevant in Legacy, especially since the similar Baleful Strix still is, but it may be played a bit less in a world where snow doesn't matter quite as much. At number 7, it is Nyssa, Steward of Elements, one of the few holdovers from the 2019 list, but Nyssa dropped from number 2 all the way to number 7. Nyssa was the first Planeswalker to have X as part of her cost. She comes into play with X Loyalty, which makes her pretty flexible. If you need to play her on turn 3, you can, and raise her loyalty immediately by scrying. Her other two abilities are pretty nice, too. Her zero ability can give you a free land or creature a decent chunk of the time, and while her minus 6 isn't a back-breaking ultimate, she can turn two lands you have into 10 damage, which can sometimes just end the game on the spot. Nissa Steward of Elements gained all of her points in Standard, primarily in Energy decks. At number 6, it is Tamiyo, Collector of Tales, another card that didn't even exist when I made the 2019 video. Tamiyo is a War of the Spark Planeswalker, which of course means she has a static ability, and hers is nice in the right matchups. Not having to discard cards or sacrifice permanence is nice to have on a Planeswalker who already has some nice abilities for grinding out value. Her plus one can draw you cards, but more importantly, it also loads your graveyard quickly, and her minus three then lets you get value out of the cards you put there. So far, all of Tamayo's points have come in Standard, where she was primarily played in Wilderness Reclamation and Sultai Control decks. At number 5, it is Rogue Refiner, the final holdover from the 2019 list. Rogue Refiner was number 1 last time and has fallen to number 5 now. Rogue Refiner was a super good blue-green card before being one was cool. It may not look very exciting, but the Refiner gives you a ton of value for only 3 mana, as it gives you a reasonable 3-2 body, draws you a card, and gives you 2 energy. That last part might not seem like a big deal, but it could be used to power all kinds of great cards in Standard. Two energy frequently amounted to an entire card worth of value, and as a result, Rogue Refiner frequently felt like a 3 for 1. Eventually, the Refiner got banned out of Standard as a result of the dominance of the energy decks that it helped power. But while it was in Standard, it was one of the most played cards in the entire format. So, because we know Rogue Refiner is the last card from the last list, that means the top four in this list are all new cards. They are all pretty powerful ones too, and all of them have over 100 points. Also, the top four didn't even exist when the 2019 video was made, so they've all gained all their points in the last two years. All right, let's move into the top tier of this list. At number four, it is Oko, Thief of Crowns. Oko may be the card that first comes to your mind when you think about blue-green getting powerful cards over the last couple of years, and who can blame you? 
Oko was one of the most maligned cards released in the last couple of years, and this is because he was just way too powerful. His abilities are all great. His plus one is really the most powerful one, as you can use it to turn your opponent's best creature or artifact into a vanilla 3-3. You can also use it on your own stuff, like the food Oko makes, to turn things into better creatures. Then his minus five allows you to exchange control of things, like by giving them your food for something much better of theirs. Oko was a huge problem and has been played in every single format successfully. He was the most overpowered in Standard, where he was only legal for a few months, and yet he managed to gain 60 points just in that format. The peak of his Standard dominance all came in one weekend, when he was in 18 of the 24 decks to top 8 Premier events between August 8th and 10th. He was ultimately banned out of Standard, Pioneer, Historic, Modern, Legacy, and even Brawl. That definitely played a role in suppressing Oko's score, and if he hadn't been banned, he would probably be number one on this list. At number three, it is High Droid Crassus. It was in Ravnica Allegiance, a set released exactly one week after the 2019 Top 10. This card was hugely hyped when it was revealed, since it is an absolutely stupid win condition for control decks. A control deck doesn't even necessarily have to resolve this against you, because in the late game... You're not going to win if they play it because it's a cast trigger. They're going to gain life and restock their hand, and if you don't deal with it, it's probably also just a huge flying win condition, all in one card. The Crassus was seeing a ton of play in Standard even before the arrival of Oko basically made blue-green decks unbeatable. It was primarily played in Bant and Sultai Control. Then when Oko was around, the Crassus was one of the key cards in the deck. Even after the Oko ban, though, Hydroid Crassus continued to find success in ramp decks like those utilizing Nyssa, who shakes the world. Pumping a ton of mana into Hydroid Crassus is crazy powerful and hard for most decks to beat. Hydroid Crassus has been an important card in Standard, Pioneer, and Historic. At number two, it is Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. Uro is the newest card on this list, but also number two, so that alone should tell you something. Early in the game, Uro is effectively a three mana spell that gains you three life and lets you explore. Not a bad deal if you're looking to ramp, especially because the stuff it does early makes it more likely you'll survive to the later game, Gaining life and drawing a card is a big deal, along with the extra land drop. Then, in the later part of the game, Uro can escape from the graveyard and start doing that every single time you attack, too. So, uh, yeah, Uro has a ton of power, and as a result, it has had a large impact on several different formats. In Standard, it was utterly dominant, showing up in the two top decks of the format, which were Bant and Sultai Ramp decks. It was the most played non-land card at several different Standard events in the last year, contributing to its huge score that came only in a matter of months. Uro also found success in other formats too, and ultimately ended up being banned out of Standard, Historic, Pioneer, and Modern. This may make it more difficult to add to its score, but it's also being played in Legacy and Vintage, so it probably isn't completely done. And at number one, it's Growth Spiral. Explore is already a pretty good card, so making it an instant is obviously a big deal. Like the other powerful Simic cards printed in the last two years, Growth Spiral has already had multi-format success, gaining points in various ramp and control decks in Standard, Pioneer, Historic, and Modern. Alongside Uro, this gave decks access to eight copies of powerful Explore variants, and that formed the core of a whole lot of decks in all of those formats. Also, like a lot of the newer cards on this list, Grow Spiral was banned, but only in Standard. It's still legal in other formats, and that probably gives it a good shot at staying at number one on this list. Well, those are the 10 plus Simic cards that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. As promised, the list has some pretty insane turnover. If you're interested in buying any of these powerful Simic cards, in the description you can find direct links to each of them within the Card Kingdom store. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it, as that makes it more likely more people will watch it. If you want to get updated every time a new MTG Top 10 comes out, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you want to catch up on the over 340 MTG Top 10s I've already done, you should see a playlist on your screen now. Thanks for watching.